So before you guys try and skip your way through this video and get yourself lost, let me just tell you that I divided this walkthrough into different sections and included the time code links for those sections in the description below. So if you didn't want to watch me do line art for 45 years, then you can skip to wherever you like without a problem. However, I would advise you to try and watch the video all the way through since I do make references later that I only explained in the beginning of the video, but I'll include in the description everything I explained and under what time section they are explained. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video for some exciting announcements. So to open up a new canvas, just go to File, then New, and a window should pop up for settings. I always start off on 3200 by 2400 pixel canvas with 350 dpi. Why? I don't know. I just crop and rearrange as I go. Now you see here on the right, I have two layers already and that's because Medibank Paint by default opens a canvas with a transparent layer. When you create a new canvas, there is an option in the settings window for you to change the default layer to be a colored layer, but I just leave it on transparency, then I add a white layer below the transparency layer and I use the transparent layer to sketch. Also, I don't have any exact brush settings for sketching, I just use any tool at a low opacity, usually just the pencil tool. So for line art, I don't have specific brush settings. I use the default pen tool with a size of 3 to 6 pixels. You'll see me change the size randomly because I don't use a specific size. And there's nothing really special I do with line art. I purposely don't connect my lines, but that's just because I'm lazy. Oh, but I would like to note that I do make different layers for different sections of line art. So hair line art would be on a separate layer from clothing, eyes, and everything else. So here it looks like I'm not doing anything, but I'm actually checking the protect alpha option on each layer and using a dark purplish color to recolor the line art. And I do this so the line art is light enough for me to edit later when I soften it because I like the line art to blend nicely with the coloring. And there's no real reason I use purple, I just like to use a nice color other than black. So for coloring skin, I initially use a random dark color to close any open lines so I can just use the bucket tool to fill in my base color. And by using the protect alpha option on the skin layer, I'll eventually change the skin to my actual desired base color. So with the protect alpha option still checked on the skin layer, I use the airbrush tool on a random low opacity to brush the edges of the skin with a pink tint. And afterwards, I use the pen tool and a darker skin color to cell shade the skin. And you might notice I changed the hue of the skin to be more pinkish and I did that by clicking filter at the top and then hue. After cell shading the skin, I used the airbrush tool with the skin's base color on a random low opacity and a large size. And I use the edge of the airbrush tool to subtly fade the cell shading. I sometimes use customized watercolor brushes on the skin to help blend some parts, but I'm still experimenting with finding the right brush settings. But here are the settings if you want. Okay, so it's kind of hard to explain what I do with eyes, but the only tools that I use are pen and airbrush. I don't do any blending with watercolor or anything, but I do edit the hue on the eyes a lot and play around with the level settings under filter. 
and I also experiment with layer filtering a lot. Hair is also kind of hard to explain since I'm still experimenting with hair coloring styles, but I use pen to cell shade at first, then I use the airbrush tool with the hair's base color to subtly fade the cell shading just as I did with the skin. And then after doing that, I cell shade again with a darker color and fade it again. Then I do really weird unexplainable things with the watercolor, pencil, and airbrush tool to add more detail. And I end by using the pen tool to add shine and more hair strands. Sometimes I'll make a clipped layer above the hair layer with a blending setting on overlay and using the airbrush tool and a pinkish color, I'll add a warm tint to the bangs. Then I'll use the skin's base color on a normal clipped layer or the hair layer itself after merging the overlay layer to lighten it even more. And I use the overlay and add layers at a low opacity to add other highlights in the hair. So I color clothes and accessories in a very formulaic way, so I don't think I need to slow down and explain anything important. Basically, I have my base color down, I use pen tool to cell shade, I use the airbrush tool with whatever base color was used to fade the cell shading, then I use watercolor to blend, I use airbrush and watercolor to blend even more, and to highlight the clothes, I use airbrush with the layer blending option on add, and I put the layer opacity on low. Sometimes to add more vibrancy and put more hues in the color of clothes, I'll use a very saturated color on an overlay layer to play around and experiment. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I hoped I helped some of you guys even a little bit. I know I rent really rent. Okay, I can't speak today. I know I went really, really fast, but I'll try my best to answer everyone's questions in the comments if I wasn't clear about some things, which I'm pretty sure I was. But as for my announcements, some of you may know that my commissions have been closed for a long time, but they are finally reopening in June, so reservations for June commissions are now open. Also, the reason I'm reopening my commissions is because some of my artist friends and I are planning to participate in Anime Expo's Artist Alley next year. So not 
2016 but 2017 and I'm so excited but so scared oh my gosh it's still not confirmed since we can't purchase anything for the next year until this year's anime expo is over but I'm just really excited to see how hard I can challenge myself with this preparation and I'd really really love it if you guys give me suggestions on fan art I can do for prints buttons and keychains and I'm really excited to do this project and also really excited to be given the chance to meet some of you guys in person at next year's expo. So if you'd like to support me, click my commission link in the description to see my prices.